Oh, this Bulls team, they're going to they're make it fun and a bit nerve-wracking at times this year, aren't they? They've already done some of that in the first seven games, and they certainly did that last night against the Boston Celtics. Holy shit. Now, you talk about a yo-yo kind of pendulum up, down, and up again game. This is it right here. And even when you look at the start of this game, like the Bulls came out and were playing decent basketball, especially on the offensive end. You know, DeRozan was off to a good start. They were 12 of 19 from the field and 7 of 9 from 3. Like, they were twinkling the nylon with their three balls. And yet they were still down by one to the Celtics, 35 to 34 after the first. Because they were having trouble stopping the Celtics. Uh, Boston was 13 to 24 from the field in the first, including four of eight from three. And they had 10 fast break points in that first quarter, so that made a bit of a difference there. But you're thinking, okay, Bulls are going to be in a fight tonight. The Celtics came out, they're in good shooting form. The Bulls are going to need, be, need to be able to match in kind. And, you know, Levine was off to another rough start in the first quarter. And then the crazy thing happened in the second quarter. Like, initially the script totally flipped, and here come the Bulls kind of out like gangbusters, that bench, that second unit, bringing that energy, making that difference, and all of a sudden the Bulls have this double-digit lead, and you're like, okay, we might be cooking tonight. And then Jalen Brown decides he wants to start going off, and the Celtics start lighting the Bulls' ass up a little bit, and all of a sudden you're talking about this big double-digit lead that all of a sudden became... A deficit and you turn around and at halftime you're like what the fuck happened the Celtics were up 67 to 59 I mean the Bulls were up at a, by 11 at one point in the second I think about that momentum swing they were up by 11 at one point in time in the second quarter and by the time you got to halftime they were down eight like that had me a little worried because I'm like Jalen Brown's going off you know even though it's not the best of shooting nights for Jason Tatum like you wonder if he's gonna start get going this is not a good second quarter finish and closeout for the Bulls. Like I said, you had a slow start from Levine, not just in the first quarter, but in the first half. 1 of 6 from the field and 0 of 4 from 3. Like, he certainly came alive in the second half, but again, I want to emphasize, like, Zach's going to have to start playing better in the first half because eventually that's going to catch up to this team. You need your stars to play like stars all the time sometimes. And, you know, He's doing some other things to try and contribute, but first and foremost, Zach Levine is a scorer, and the Bulls need him to be a big scorer, and they're going far too many first quarters, first halves, long stretches with Zach Levine not doing much of anything at all. DeMar DeRozan, on the other hand, was electric in that first half with 21 points on only 12 shots, so incredibly efficient. He was able to get to the hole consistently on his dribble drive penetration. The Celtics were really having trouble with him. And then, of course, you got DeMar DeRozan and lost out of the mid-range jump shot. But again, coming out of halftime, the Bulls are down eight, and you're like, oh, this might be bad. And it didn't get any better in the third quarter, that's for sure. The Celtics continued to roll. Uh, the Bulls really, you know, kind of just couldn't keep up. Like, I mean, they scored 30 points in the third, but they let the Celtics score 36. Celtics were hitting some big shots. Some open shots. They're getting a lot of open shots. Like in the first three quarters of this game last night, the Bulls' defense was not exactly up to snuff. Now, sometimes you're just going to have situations where teams get open shots, and this was a night that the Celtics, at least in the first three quarters, were hitting those open shots. But you'd have thought that the Bulls would have been able to play a little bit better defense on the Celtics team, and they were just having trouble matching up. And after... Three, you know, you talk about at one point in time, Boston had a 19-point lead in the third quarter, which is a very important thing to keep in mind here as you're getting ready to talk about the fourth quarter. They were up 103-89 to after three um, because of the number of free throw attempts the Celtics were getting. Like, they were getting to the line, getting more of the calls in their favor at home. They were doing better in terms of their three-point shooting. Like, it sure looked like this was going to be a Celtics victory. And then the fucking fourth quarter happened. Like, the Bulls came out like goddamn gangbusters. It was a 17-2 to 2 run to start the fourth to take the lead. Like, getting great energy, you know, in this spot from guys like Ayo. Ayo had a great night. It was his best game of the season so far. Derek Jones Jr., Tony Bradley, Derek, uh, Tony Bradley Jr., you know, Caruso. The bench mob, as Stacey King would say, as I call them, the G-Unit. I mean, they came out and... They make a difference. They make an impact. They might not have the best offensive punch 
in terms of bench units in the league, but goddamn can they impact games. Goddamn can they change the momentum just like that, and they certainly fucking did. Like, they helped this team get out to a 17-2 run to start the fourth quarter, and it was really all downhill from there for the Bulls in a good way. The Celtics were just overwhelmed in the fourth quarter. For a team that was shooting well the first three quarters, they couldn't buy a shot in the fourth. For a team that played pretty clean basketball the first three quarters, they played all types of sloppy in the fourth. You know, Levine is getting his shots when he wants them. DeMar DeRozan's getting his shots when he wants them. The, the Celtics just looked overmatched at this point, and he got some big shots late. And lo and behold, don't you know the Chicago Bulls come back after being up 11 at one point in the second, down 19 at one point in the third. They end up winning this game by freaking 14. That's insane. 128 to 114, largely because of that fourth quarter. It's not how you start, it's how you finish, right? Fourth quarter matters the most. Sometimes it certainly does, and it did on Monday night for the Bulls as they outscored the Boston Celtics 39 to 11. Just think about that, 39 to 11. Like they won this one comfortably going away. Who the fuck would have seen that coming, especially when they're down 19 points at one point in time in the third? You know, the keys for the Bulls, DeMar DeRozan with another big night, you know, certainly validating the trade they made for him, that's for damn sure, with 37. Zach Levine, after the quiet-ass start in the first half, came alive in the second half, and he finished with 26. One of the big keys to this game for me was the Bulls' bench imposing their will on the game at key times, outscoring the Boston bench 36-24, to and that was led by rookie Io DeSumo's 14 points. He was 6-6 six six from the th field. Like, he was everywhere. Defensive plays, facilitating the great lob he had to Derrick Jones Jr. Like, holy shit. Like, when you see an I.O. play like this, you're saying, fuck a Kobe White, fuck everybody. Like, I.O. needs to continue to get his time in the rotation. You saw this in this Bulls team tonight, last night. You know, Billy Donovan only played nine guys. And he shortened the, felt like he shortened the rotation a little bit, got more minutes for some of these other guys off the bench, and it made a difference. It absolutely mattered. Uh, meanwhile, for Boston, Jalen Brown led the Celtics with 28. You know, they got into the position that they did largely because of Jalen Brown hitting some big shots in the second and third quarters. And then uh, Jason Tatum and Al Horford with 20 points each. But a really nice win for the Bulls to be able to go on the road and go from 19 down at one point in time in the third quarter to winning by 14. I knew it. They had the fucking Celtics fans that were left in the arena at the end of the game, booing the damn Celtics. And they should have booed them. Because this should have been a comfortable victory for the Celtics. They should have put away the Bulls. And the mistake that they made, the problem that they had, was that they let the Bulls hang around. And they couldn't contend with some of the energy of some of these bench guys. And the one thing I want to point out here about this Bulls team, again, I've said it in a couple of other game recaps, is what impresses me so far about this Bulls team this year is they can win games in a variety of different ways. Tonight... It was about plugging away for four quarters and putting the clamps down defensively in the fourth when you really needed to, and that's what they did. Some nights this team can win via defense. Some nights they're going to win because of offense. Other nights they're going to win just because of their energy level, their hustle, their ability to get second chance opportunities, so forth. Like that's a well-balanced team. That's a team that you worry about. That's a team that can do some damage. No, I'm still not calling them a championship contender. And get mad at me, Bulls fans, if you want to. But I don't think they're all the way there. They have some gaping flaws on this team. But right now, you cannot deny that this team is playing a very nice, very fun level of basketball. The most fun you've had watching a Bulls team in at least a freaking decade. And what I find ironic about this, or maybe not so ironic about this, is they're doing this without Patrick Williams, who had the wrist injury, might be out the rest of the season, and without Kobe White, who's out right now. And this team's better off for it. Like, it's going to sound savage to say, but seriously, what the fuck was Patrick Williams doing? He wasn't doing much. You weren't feeling his presence. Like, sometimes there is a matter of injuries lead to addition by subtraction. That's not a disrespect on Patrick, but right now, the absolute best thing for this Bulls team at this moment was that he did go down with injury because it's giving more playing time to guys like Io, giving more playing time to guys like Javante Green, giving more playing time to guys um, like Derek Jones. And these guys are having an impact on these games. Those minutes can be redistributed in other places. And right now there are just other guys that are doing more with their minutes, doing more to contribute on both ends of the floor. 
So it's one of these ironic things, like I said even before the season started, like this team ultimately goes full as far as Patrick Williams develops. Well, the reality is, is he developed his ass onto the bench for several months due to an injury, and the Bulls are playing even better. I worry about when Kobe White eventually comes back. Like, how is that going to fuck up the whole flow and the rotation of this team? I wish they would have done what the fuck I wanted them to do, which is trade both of those guys in the offseason. That said, they didn't. We'll see what happens going forward. But man, what an exciting night, huh? DeRozan with 37. Like, damn. We were starting to think that DeRozan was on the wrong side of downside of his career. I know it was still early in the year and a lot could change, but right now, man... He's easily playing at an all-star level. You could make an argument right now based off of the fact the Bulls are 6-1 and one through 7 games that DeMar DeRozan is an MVP candidate. No, that's not being crazy or fucking delusional here or anything like that, but right now, he's an MVP candidate. It's a lot of fun. We'll see how long it lasts, but damn it, that was a hell of a win last night in a game that the Bulls absolutely deserve to lose and should have lost. And that's what really good teams do. They find ways to win games they absolutely should lose. And Io, I salute you! Way to do Chicago proud, sir.